This is Ben with ITNH. In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the jig print feature of Raster Lake 6. For starters, we need to select our file that we want to use to populate into a jig fixture or just layout file. Uh, this feature also supports the ability to use multiple files, but to do that, you need to start with them arranged together. So let's do that now. I'm going to control click and select two different files here. We're going to go to our arrangement window and then click arrange. This will link them in an arranged fashion, meaning that they can be worked together, but not trying to composite their artwork. All right, from here on the right side, let's go to the jig print feature. Once we're here, you'll see a nice layout of boxes with one of the defaults provided by Maki. And what we're going to be doing is setting it up so the artwork populates into these boxes in the way we want them to. And of course, creating our own layout. So first off, go to this little checkbox and turn on jig print. From there, we can define a jig that we want to use. Making sure to create a new one up at the top here. So in this case, we'll just click into this drop down box, type in test two, or three, uh, depending on what you're doing. And when you're done doing that, click Add Jig Template, the nice green plus sign. From here, we'll be able to edit different things. Your first set of options is the jig itself. Now, when it says this, it's not referring to your individual parts, but the whole overall plate. Say you actually had a physical jig made of acrylic or a, maybe even aluminum. You might have a full plate with a measurement with a width and height. This is where you'd enter it. In this case, we're going to leave it as the size of the bed because that's what we're working with. Uh, just a note, there is a diskew option. If you look over at the screen, you can see what that does. I highly advise trying to avoid that. Now, what you're really interested in is the material options. This is where we set the size of our boxes. So for now, let's just make them a nice larger size here. We'll do a five by two rectangle. As you can see, that's way too much for the current size and current printer. So we need to change out the amount being used. Let's, okay, four by six, that fits pretty good. Now, the next thing we have to do is set an interval pitch. What this means, with the interval at least, is how you set your spacing. Now, you have your interval and your first position. Your first position denotes where the bottom right of that first box is. In this case, let's be easy and go one and one. Now we know it's one inch up. We can see now that these boxes are out of line. That will change soon. When we go back to interval pitch, we have two different measurements, width and height. The width is currently set to five inches as well as the width of the actual box. That means there's no gap between them. So let's put the interval pitch to 5.25. Or When doing this, it adds a quarter inch in between them because it's taking 5.25 inches to get from here to here. And let's reduce the height 2.25. So now we have a nice little quarter inch gap between our spaces for every product. The next option we have available here is the layout. This is where your art will actually register when you populate it. It defaults to bottom right, just like the printer does. If you load up a file, it'll lock the bottom right of the file to the bottom right of your print area. But the jig print actually allows you to use center, which is fairly popular, so we'll turn that on for now. The last option here is for individual movement of the different parts. So let's say box number two. Material two is selected. We could move that back. We could move it down. This is for doing little fine adjustments if you have a physical fixture that you had made and maybe a pocket is a little off or you just don't quite like how it's sitting and you can do tiny adjustments on each part. So once we have our set of boxes here, we'll go to our jig layout. 
now you can see some of the artwork. In this case, the two different files that I arranged together. Then what we can do here is on the left side of the screen is the job list. And we can work with each file, setting it to different amounts and scaling. In this case, the first file I've selected is scaled down to fit in this nice little rectangle here. So I'll populate it, giving it a few copies. Let's say we need 15 of those. And then we can change over to the other logo that is falling behind this one and generate a few of those. As you can see, you can fill up the pockets and even have excess, but the excess won't work. It will only fill what you have. So once you have all this, you'll be capable of just going to the rip and print here under the execution window and sending this job through and it's going to print your logos in these locations according to this laid out fixture. Now one big perk here of course is that this is a saved thing. You can now check your drop down, when, uh, drop down menu here and you'll see that your tests are here and the defaults from Amaki are also there. So you can reuse it if you have a physical fixture that you need to come back to. Another option is you can do print the jig outline. This allows you to print the outline of these boxes. So say you have a, a small tin or some sort of card that you want to print a few of, but you don't have the time to have something made or you don't want to have the budget for it. In this case, you could just print the lines on a piece of paper or plastic on your printer's bed for a good reference point to lay them out by hand and use this for accurate placement. Well, that's the basics on how to use the jig print feature. I hope this proves helpful. If you have any more questions, please feel free to check out some of our other videos or contact us if you need to.